Great, thanks everybody for joining. I think I know everyone on this call, so there's no need for me to introduce myself, but I'm Robin. Hi everybody, good to see everyone again, even though I'm seeing black squares except for Cam, that's okay. Um, with me, I've got Cam Steven, who is the women's, and there's Jen Warren. Uh, Cam Steven is our women's ski team, material ski team, women's head coach. Um, so I'm going to lean on him pretty heavy in this one. Um, and Jen Warren is here with us as well. She's uh, one of the SOD ski team coaches and uh, a few of our warriors who have been out there uh, traveling all over the world during a pandemic um, with athletes. So uh, valuable uh, experience to have on our call today to share with you guys a little bit of their learning. So it's a pretty small group, as you guys can see. Um, I figured this wasn't going to be one that was going to be consumed far and wide by a lot of coaches because a lot of them don't plan camps. Um, but a lot of you guys on the call do, and you can hopefully share some information with uh, those at your club that, or your division that do plan. Um, because I think these sorts of discussions are really important um, right now uh, when people are starting to think about maybe not a, a, a camp or a project um, in 2021, but for sure spring, summer, um, when COVID is still going to be a reality um, and all the things you guys need to know and think about uh, ahead of time. So I'm just going to share my screen and we'll get rolling here. Um, can you guys see my presentation? Or are you seeing the website? See the presentation, but you're in a work, you're in a workbook view right now. There it is. Good. There cool. we go. Amazing. I'm a little rusty. I haven't done this in a while. So you guys are uh, <laughs> my first test back. And is my logo correct here as well on my my face? Knocking it out of the park. Yeah. Amazing. 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 Yeah. Earlier today it wasn't. Okay. So um, it's fifty slides long, right? No minimum, Brian. <laughs> we're gonna nice. be here. Okay. We're gonna be here for a long time. No, it's actually quite short. And uh, I think what I'm hoping is there's just gonna be a lot of discussion here, hopefully questions that you guys want to ask, um, as well as if there's any gaps that you guys uh, see as a club that you're gonna need to, in order to fill any planning you've got coming up that we can help with. So happy to do that. Um, so as I mentioned, um, this is the beginning of our coach webinar series. So these are all fully subsidized, uh, partially by the Coaches Association of Ontario, uh, but also with some uh, upcoming yet to be announced sponsors that are gonna be supporting the series. So thanks to them. Uh, so the theme this year is going to be uh, in and around safe sport uh, and the risk management uh, of that. And specifically tonight, we're talking about a risk management piece, not related to safe sport, but within the realm. Um, uh, mental health and leadership development. So the mental health uh, and leadership development piece will be something we'll launch in November. We've got some really exciting um, speakers we're just trying to get confirmed for November and then we'll release those topics. But I think specifically uh, education in regard to children's mental health and then also those adults who are, are leading those children uh, and, and how to manage yourselves too in a world that is not like it was a year and a half ago. Um, you guys are taking on a pretty big leadership role for these, these kids. So um, that's going to be the focus. So all the sessions count for one professional development or one risk management credit. So make sure as all of you did register through Snow Reg um, to make sure you get that credit. So thanks for doing that. Uh, and everything will be recorded so you can listen back to it or share it with, uh, with anyone else in your club um, for information purposes later on. So we'll get rolling on here. Um, all of you know about our mitigation planning document that we released last week, for last week, last year in September. Um, and that's still a requirement anytime you leave your division for a project. So if you're in Northern Ontario and you're gonna go to Quebec, you need to have a mitigation plan. Uh, if you're in NCD and you're gonna go to Alberta, you need a mitigation plan. Uh, that comes to us and then we review it and send it to Alpine Canada for sanctioning purposes and then you're good to go. But a lot of work goes into that plan before um, you guys send it uh, to us. And 
we've got some templates from the SOD ski team and Ontario ski team that they've completed over the last year that we've been happy to share with clubs. That's a good starting point. Um, but I certainly wanted to lean on Cam to talk. He and I met last week just to kind of review key talking points. Um, he's much more eloquent about this stuff. So I'm going to ask him to, uh, to unmute and we'll talk a little bit about some of his learning specifically to do. And Jen, you can jump in here anytime as well. Uh, over the last year and a bit traveling internationally. Now I know a lot of you on the phone or, or on the, this call won't necessarily be traveling internationally with your athletes this year, um, but the same rules apply. And the same rules apply in, in, from my perspective when you're on club property as well. That diligence that's required when you're traveling internationally is gonna be required as you guys experienced for the short amount of time we were on hill last year in, uh, in Ontario. So. We'll just run through some of the sort of key nuggets that Cam and I talked about. And if you guys have any questions, there's a small group of us, please unmute, ask the question or drop something in the chat. Um, but Cam, uh, certainly one thing when I asked you the, at the very beginning of our conversation last week, give me the top piece that you've learned over the last year and a half going on multiple international trips. And this was what you said, best practices now and moving forward are most important. And that basics keep you safe. Those were the, the two big takeaways that we talked about. So could you talk a little bit about that uh, for everybody? Yeah, uh, I think the first thing I, I, I would say, and, and the other valuable sort of member in here too, um, is Mary Beth traveled with the Ontario team all last year. So she's lived a bunch of this as well. So jump in any time MB. Uh, but, um, you know, I, th I think the first point is to know that it is possible and that teams and organizations, you know, provincial teams, club teams, national teams around the world are moving around in COVID. Uh, different teams, different clubs uh, and countries take it at different levels of seriousness. Um, but that it is possible. And I think that's a really important piece because when we were doing this chat last year, we, we felt like it was possible, but we didn't really know. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we kind of knew, but we didn't know. So uh, it is possible. And, and, and I think it's possible to do it safely. And, and I think it's possible to keep a lot of the fun and a lot of the reasons that people are in ski racing, whether as coaches or parents or volunteers or, or as athletes, uh, a, a lot of that, you know, can, can be fulfilled in a COVID environment. Having said that, I, th I think basics keep you safe hundred uh, percent. And that's on everybody at all times, at all levels to try and push that message, you know, and, and to me, basics are wear your mask, keep your distance, wash your hands. Um, and if you're not feeling well, tell somebody, don't just go chugging along and hope that it's the sniffles and not COVID. Um, and and I, I think the hard part of that is, is for, for coaches, you're going to sound like a broken record. Um, we travel, our team, our, our adults, you know, 20, 25 year olds, 18 year olds, um, <clears throat> And, and I think even peer to peer coaches, you know, that there's times when people lose focus and, and you have to continue to, to hit the basics and remind people. Uh, I think the other part is, is making sure there's an, a, an opportunity to do the basics well. So making sure that coaches have extra masks. Uh, if you're at meal plans or if you're at meals, making sure there's a bathroom where kids can wash their hands, making sure there's hand sanitizer out. Uh, in team vehicles or rental vehicles, also making sure your, you know, hand sanitizers available. Um, and, you know, as, as far as, so that's, that's basics. And, you know, for the most part, uh, we've been able with the Ontario teams uh, to keep ourselves pretty safe uh, so far, or at least we haven't seen any positive <laughs> tests come back. So, so far we're doing all right. Uh, but it, it's constant vigilance with it. Um, you can't really let off, let off the gas pedals and it's tough. And, and I think the younger the coaches, the younger, the athletes, the more you start to feel like a broken record. So anything you can do to build 
um, buy into that, whether it's games, whether it's ward systems, uh, and, and then just basic club education, uh, whether you're traveling or at home, I think goes a long, long way. Um, and then, you know, I, I think uh, best practices now, what best practices were a year ago were, they've evolved. Uh, through the international understanding, I think, of, of COVID. Um, and so like a lot of the, the questionnaires a year ago, have you traveled? Um, you know, have you been in contact with anybody that's traveled? Have you, uh, do you have a laundry list of symptoms? Um, and a lot of that has evolved. And, and I think that's important for our teams and our athletes um, to stay up to date with that, because if you have a 14 day travel requirement, I can't do anything and anybody in the house that I live with can't do anything. Um, so I think keeping things like your tracking, uh, keeping your, your documentations and your questionnaires sort of up to speed with best practice is important. Um, and trying to keep it as simple as possible. You know, the, the 10 questions we were asking last year um, can become really onerous when you're doing it every day as a coach and every day as an athlete. So trying to streamline it and keep it as simple as possible, uh, I think is really important. So I, I to those two points, that's, I, I think those are really critical pieces, whether you're traveling or at home. Yeah. And I think it's, it's listed at the bottom of this slide, but continuing to review um, I think all of us are guilty from year to year, taking a, a document, making a copy of it, putting a new date on it and pressing go, right? Um, I am. Uh, but this, <laughs> this, this type of document is something that needs to be reviewed um, and continue to be reviewed uh, time and time again. Uh, and not only just the lead coach that is uh running the project but all coaches all parents to a certain degree uh and athletes for sure and i know that all of you have gotten amazing at this zoom thing so you know ahead of time connecting with your parents and your families and this is this is the way it's going to operate and does everyone agree and understand that this is the policy and the procedure that we're going to follow um because the parents are going to be at a certain point, um, you know, at some projects responsible, if there is a COVID positive, you know, they're going to have to get on a plane and, and, and contribute. So there are really important pieces of this puzzle that we need to make sure everyone's continuing to focus on. Uh, and it's not just a document that you submit for sanctioning purposes, that it's actually something that you guys are going to be putting into place on a daily basis. Um, so that's a really important piece as well. Yeah, and, and, and I think to speak to some of the other points, uh, I would strongly believe or, or support what Robin just said. Um, I, I think it's really easy, and I think it's really easy as well for like head coaches to, to know the, the document intimately, and then um, sort of more junior coaches or coaches that aren't necessarily in a leadership position on a camp to, uh, to gloss over uh, that document. And when stuff starts turning with COVID, although we haven't lived that, we've watched some other teams live it. Um, it, it moves very, very quickly. And, and I think the goal of having those mitigation documents, it's not just to display to people that you've, that you've done some research and, and that you know what you're doing, but I, I think it's to have something that's actually going to help on the ground, at least as a starting place. Every new venue you go to um, has a different way of operating uh, within health regions. Um, you know, the difference between Simcoe Muskoka and Gray Bruce here in Collingwood, there's differing, operate, there's differing uh, procedures for how you report, how you, you contact trace, all those things. And it's the same across the world. So I think it's important for, for you to talk about it with your staffs and for the staffs to know that. Um, and then in here to ensure that all stakeholders are on board with that plan um, is really important to say, you know, this is how we're going to operate. And some of that might be if you're traveling internationally or domestically, if you're on a camp at uh, Sun Peaks or if you're at a race project out of 
region and you do end up with a positive case, how are you going to handle that? Or is the coach going to sit there for the 10 to 14 days as the athlete recovers um, or, or pass the clean bill of health? Uh, is a parent expected to come over? Um, if you're dealing with uh, coaches that have jobs, it's a reality. Well, I've got to be at my job on Monday and I only signed up for this project Sunday. So I, you know, I think the plan goes hand in hand with making sure that everybody's on board. Um, Cause if you don't have buy-in um, you need to address your plan or, or at, there comes a point where you got to say to somebody, you know, look, this is how we're going to operate. And if you're not comfortable with that, then you need to make the decision to not send your child or you as a coach to not go. And that's really brutal. And, and there's been so much, no, we can't do this in COVID that you hate to be the person, or I would hate to be the parent to have to do that. But a reality is, is, is the plans are there for a reason. And if people don't understand them, um, it, 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 it creates problems. Um, the other part, you know, the, the plan needs to be realistic and defendable. Uh, the AOA mitigation plan that we put together has, has evolved over the last year. And, and you have to make sure that you're not putting anything in that plan that you're not willing to do. Um, because, uh, especially for us traveling, uh, it's linked to our medical insurance through SAIP, S-A-I-P, and, if we have a whole bunch of people with positive cases, uh, insurance through our discussions last year with Dave Pym and stuff like that, he said, you better be able to show uh, that you've done what you've said you were gonna do uh, because insurance might be spending big money if you've got a group of kids testing positive. Um, so again, it comes back to buying into the plan. It comes back to, is the plan making sense? And then have you executed that? And, and it's not to scare people. Uh, I don't think your plan has to, to be every minute of every second and, and encounter ever every eventuality, but you have to make sure the plan makes sense and that people are buying into it. And then I think the final part is research. It's changing so quickly right now, uh, and it's going to continue to change again for domestic travel with vaccine requirements coming in for all air and rail travel here in the next, I think it's in the next month here now, that's going to change. Um, we know that Alberta and Saskatchewan right now are having a hell of a time with COVID. So people that might be flying out to Calgary for fall training. Um, last year, NB and I lived some extremely dynamic days in November and December, and, and that was within country. So just because you're, you're not traveling internationally doesn't mean things can't get uh, exciting quickly. Um, and, I, and then I think with, with that ex, sort of excitement, communication is uh, paramount. Yeah, and I think you said it, that being proactive as opposed to reactive is really important here. And I think, I think you, you also said this to you, Kim, you don't want to scare people. Uh, and I talked to Kip briefly today about this webinar, and so I've got a little nugget that I'll share that, that he shared in a minute. But um, we're, we are, this is supposed to be fun, you know, <laughs> but there is an element of uh, diligence that's required. And it's really important that everyone that is a part of these projects understands that and is there and in place to be responsible and as proactive as possible for the athletes and for the families that are, are investing in this project, because we all know how expensive ski uh, camps can be. So um, it, it's not a scare tactic. It's just be proactive, communicate, 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 and review. And, and as the three coaches uh, on this call can attest that have been traveling internationally quite a bit in the last year and a half, it's entirely possible. Um, and the last slide uh, on this five slide presentation, I'll talk a little bit about coach responsibilities and how you as coaches have to do a great job taking care of yourself too, because it's not solely on you. Uh, there's a team around you in order to help you execute it, but um, there ultimately is a, a lead and um, that lead has to lead by example. Um, 
So yeah, and and please don't let me scare you. This is all doable. In, yeah. in, in sorry if I sound like a negative, no, uh, Nancy, no, but it's not at all. It is doable. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely doable. Um, so I'm not going to bring up on the screen the mitigation plan because you guys all know where it is on our COVID page on our website. But there are key components of that mitigation plan um, that are there for a reason. And I think the important piece of looking at that plan pre obviously departure, having it with you and reviewing it while you're you know on the project. And I think the one thing that we all need to do a better job of, and, and I'm sure as Cam and Jen and MB have gotten back from trips over the last year and a half, a post wrap, you know, and how maybe some things could have been done better. Um, yeah, is super important and because I know you guys are learning stuff all the time and and it may not necessarily get logged for next time so that's a real important piece that uh, I know I need, need to do a better job of just when, with some projects just making sure there's a debrief amongst the coaches and and understanding how next time because uh, we're going to be dealing with this COVID thing for a while um, how can we done better and that mitigation plan can really it, you know it's there for a reason uh, laid out such that you are going to hit all the pieces you need to hit. Um, and as Cam said, um, they all have to be reasonable and you have to be willing to execute them. So don't, don't copy something that Cam did just because Cam did it. You have to make sure it's something that your, your club and your staff and your athletes and families are capable of. Um, that's a really important piece. Uh, so Cam mentioned this daily or the attestations are continuing to evolve. So the one that we have on our website hasn't been updated since last fall. So it will be, um, there's a lot less questions we have to ask, uh, and some new questions we have to ask. Um, so that will change and that's going to come out, uh, related to our COVID policy, which is in the works. Um, at the moment we have a draft um that will release to clubs i'm not going to give a date because i don't know because it continues to change um but i'm hoping by the end of october we'll have something out because i know a lot of clubs would like to have that leadership aca's policy will be out by the end of this week um so they are mandating vaccines for all their staff athletes and coaches as well as 13 national level events so how that would affect most of us on the call would be NORAMs, U16 nationals, um, senior nationals, uh, but obviously that'd be applicable to World Cups um, and, and of the like. So that will be mandatory for athletes, coaches, staff, volunteers at any national level event across Canada. Now, how they're going to roll that out, that'll be another piece of the puzzle logistically because we know municipalities, provinces, clubs, resorts are gonna have varying degrees of policies. So that's gonna to remain to be seen how that's executed, but that is coming down from ACA this week. Um, so we will have an updated attestation because I know a lot of you at clubs use the one we had last year. So we will update that, um, but that is something that we're gonna be dealing with again this year, whether that's on club property or daily when you're on a project. Um, so look for that updated one here shortly. Um, and, you know, Cam said this a few times that consistency daily is really important. You're going to sound like a broken record. Um, but we have, you have to be able to show what you executed on a daily basis to mitigate, um, the COVID risk and the kids, you know, we'll get, we'll get used to it. And I'm sure there's going to be those pain in the butt kids that you still got to you guys all have them. You know what I'm talking about. Um, that'll become clear. <laughs> we need to help a little bit more. Um, but and all these kids at this point are used to it, right? They're all wearing masks in school. Um, and that leads us to this next point that Kip shared with me today. He's in in uh, intertux with or a bunch of our U16 athletes. And, and he said, you know, kids, they just want to have, they just want to have as much fun as they can. And if we can just make sure that the, the burden of what we're talking about here on this line, uh, on this meeting is not theirs, 
they're part of it, but um, you know, the, the heavy lifting is certainly done by the coaches and, and they just have to focus on what they can control. And that is the basics, which is hand washing, masking and social distancing. So, you know, we want the kids to have a great experience. And, uh, and so making sure they understand what those basics are and what the responsibilities are, are really important. Um, and that was a, a piece he wanted to share that that's not their burden to bear, but they are responsible. Sorry, I got a dog coughing in the background. Uh, but they are a, a piece of it, but um, we don't want to scare them because <laughs> they're there to perform just like you guys are as coaches, um, but we're the adults. So we get to carry a little bit more of the burden. Not that majority of the athletes that's with Cam and, and Jen and MB last year were not adults because they certainly were. Go ahead, Cam. Um, yeah, we had a question in the chat here. I'll answer that in a sec, Jane. I think the other part of communication uh, um, what Kip said, uh, concentrate on what they control. And I think communication is a big part of that. Uh, we definitely got ourselves into some challenging situations last year with a lot of information moving from a lot of people. And if it gets dynamic, um, I think controlling your communication and being aware of, of, of what, uh, you know, over communications can cause you as much challenge as under communication. Um, and you don't want to lie and you don't want to hold things back, but if you're not hundred percent sure of the situation, sometimes it's best to hold tight till you are. Um, that's a difficult thing to do in the age of social media, um, and text and all that fun stuff that has information moving so quickly. Uh, but I think that's a, a piece that you talk to your athletes about as well, just like we, you know, with our teams, we talk like if somebody gets hurt, we're not texting and, and sending messages uh, on social media until we know what's going on. Uh, and I think, you know, in a COVID situation, it's also valid. If you, if you do too much, um, it can get difficult, especially when information isn't clear. So, uh, and then, yeah, Jane, on the uh, daily attestations, we used an electronic uh, attestation and it, it worked okay the difficult part was the access um, to it we're, we're working on that right now to simplify it I think if you do go online uh, we've seen people use um, Google Forms which it works okay but it's a, it was a little onerous for athletes to get into but it filled a need in the beginning uh, then we went into a an app base that worked all right. And then it got to a point where every day we raced in every resort we went to, we had to do their attestations. Um, and for our groups, it, it ended up turning into a daily check with them. And, and I think with all the technology we have, sometimes it's a miss that sometimes it's easiest for coaches to talk to athletes. And I know that's tough in a club atmosphere, uh, when you've got people coming in and out, but if you're on the road with a group of people, um, you know, sometimes it's, is everybody feeling okay this morning? You know, is everybody doing okay? Um, so. Thanks, Cam. Those are, those are my two cents. <laughs> Good two cents. Um, so I mentioned that I wanted to talk and I think this is, really important when you're formulating sort of your coaching staff. Uh, and this is where I'm going to lean on, on Cam, Jen and MB uh, as probably the, some of the most experienced of our coaches in this uh, over this last year and a half. Um, this, you know, traveling during um, a pandemic just personally, I think is no joke, but especially when you're with um, a bunch of, of children of kids. Um, so the, the individuals that you're traveling with those coaches, I mean, there has to be uh, an acknowledgement that there's going to be extra required, uh, out of each coach. Um, the days are going to be longer. Um, there's going to be a lot of extra, uh, planning and research required in order to execute a project. Um, so everyone has to be aware of that prior to departure that, that um, you're, you're gonna need more. Um, so that's gotta be upfront and uh, everyone's gotta be okay with that. Cause you know, I don't know about you but I doubt 
that they're going to get paid more just because they're being asked for more time. Um, maybe some clubs can afford that, but I'm guessing not. Um, and maybe that means, you know, for your club, you need to bring an extra coach, you know, than you, than you normally wouldn't. So that's an extra cost uh, for that project just to have an extra person there, or there's a, you know, parent chaperone, which you wouldn't normally bring. I know a lot of clubs are traveling with their parents uh, these days anyway, so that could be moot. But even if parents are there on a project, um, there's still going to be uh, extra requirements out of coaches. So certainly keep that in mind. And as any of our coaches can attest to, uh, it's pretty draining. So you have to be prepared to take care of yourself as best as possible. And, and you know, these coaches can attest to how beaten up they probably still feel um, as we roll into another season of, of heavy travel for these guys. Um, so you have to be prepared to take care of yourself because we can't have coaches getting sick COVID or not, uh, on the road. It's just not going to be helpful for anybody. So, um, you guys do hard, hard work, um, in, at, during normal times and COVID just amplified that, uh, twofold. So that's just an important piece to be on the same page with your staff, um, when you're planning a project that, uh, Pouring upon them that there's going to be a little bit extra required of everybody in order to execute it well. Um, do you want to speak to and, that, Cam? Yeah, I, th I mean, first I'd say a lot of coaches have, have taken quite a beating in the last year for travel. It's, it's more stressful. There's no way around it. Um, I think, um, you know, not, not to be afraid to take time uh, which MB is probably sitting there laughing at me right now, saying that's the pot calling the kettle black, but to make sure coaches are taking time for themselves and that you're actively programming it in. Um, if you're not rested, you're not going to be effective. Uh, I think coaches can also be a source of risk um, on projects. Yeah, great I point. It's, it's very easy for coaches to say, okay, all the kids do this all day. And then athletes are in bed and coaches can go to the pub for a beer. Um, there's been a long culture of that in ski racing for a long time. Uh, and I've enjoyed many a year of it, but um, I think uh, coaches also need to make sure that we're being personally responsible with our decisions. Um, and, you know, if you are going for an after work debrief, um, that it's, uh, it's being done safely. Um, and, um, I, I think that's a really important one, uh, cause certainly over in South Bay, there was some teams that had a pretty tight approach to their athletes and the coaches are pretty cavalier, nobody from Canada actually, but, uh, so I, I think that's a piece to be aware of. Um, and, um, yeah. I can add to that and, and, and then, and then you got to look after each other with it, with your staffs. You know, if people are having different challenges, you know, you got to give people time when they need it. Go for it, MB. Just something that surprised me last year um, that I wish I'd been a little bit more prepared for going in was when the environment you're in doesn't mismatch or is, doesn't align with your protocol um, and how, like, that just was a bit of a, like an extra draining factor um, that took some adjusting to. And again, it just kind of speaks to that diligence piece, but just like, perhaps something to be be aware of and be kind of prepared for that there's going to be groups doing things really differently and that it's good to just like, I don't know, understand that that might be a factor on your, your well being. I recommend hiking as a good personal <laughs> time thing. That's a really good point, MB, because it's, I mean, we see it just in regular life, right? That people just behave differently and, uh, especially with young kids, that's hard to explain why we're doing things differently than everybody else or, or being a little bit more, um, you know, strict with our protocols, but uh, there's a reason. And there's a reason why you guys have been uh, successful thus far uh, because of that diligence to do with the protocols. So um, really important piece. Thanks for that, Envy. I will yeah. say too, sorry, it just that I was yeah. consistently blown away with how great the athletes were at rising to the occasion mm -hmm. with managing that and just understanding it. And I, 
think that's like something even at younger ages to some extent like they're really resilient yeah. um and so it's like fair to have like yeah just a big kudos to the camps and jen and jock and the crew of the sod as well like everyone handled it really well yeah and the and you know for the most part most part the kids want to be there right and they know that in order to be there and continue to have opportunities like that right now this is what this is how they got to play ball so um kids kids get it you know for the most part and to your point mb i think they're i think the word resilience has been overused a little bit in the last like year and a half but it's not untrue uh, for sure true um so the last couple pieces on here um you know I had talked about it before being proactive um, and being able to anticipate what's coming around the corner. I think as soon as, uh, so as soon as I've heard some projects landing, coaches are already talking about, you know, departure. So what do we have to start getting in line in regard to testing and like connecting directly with the people you're going to be doing the testing to make sure, cause it's such a small window and it changes all the time. So you know, what, how are we getting to the, the, the dinner that we've got planned in three or four nights safely? Like it's, there's all, there's just always anticipating. I'm sure the coaches are like, it's ringing true in their heads that there's the wheels are always turning about where's our next potential pitfall going to be, go back to the plan, execute what we said we were going to, um, but continuing to do those, re that research. Jeff, I saw you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, so I guess, yeah, quest, question for Cam, Mb, Jen. Um, I'm thinking about this in the context of like, we're going to be traveling with like U12s, U14s. And on one hand, we're requiring parents to travel, or if a particular parent can't travel, they have to have like a designated chaperone responsible for them. Yeah. Which takes care and mitigates a lot of issues but I can already also see in the context of dealing with certain parents where there there are different levels of respect for protocol between say someone who might be a doctor and someone from a different background who just really doesn't care um and you know so you know staying in a hotel environment having parental control after hours um you know meals all being in one spot as much control as you can um kind of dictate or influence and 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 manage um like what what are your thoughts on on you know hey just let the kids out and go to the pool or whatever else they might happen to do on their own you know like that you don't have control over how, how you know what are your thoughts on, on managing that kind of stuff? My initial thought is I'm glad I'm a provincial team coach with adults that I travel with. Yeah. I wish I had, I <laughs> but, wish I had Kip on this call because he could speak to that Jeff, but go ahead, Kim. You know, I, I, well, whether it's, it's a parent or an athlete, I, I think the large, the larger the group, the more risk you're going to have, whether it's, you know, 30 athletes or, you know, five athletes and five parents, which group is more challenging? Uh, in, in my mind, I think you really have to work to try to get the parents on board to say, you know, although we're passing them back to you in the evenings, this is what we're looking for to keep the camp safe. Uh, and in, a, in, in my mind, and, and maybe I'm crazy and I'll, I'll let MB and, uh, and Jen jump in, but I, I think a participant agreement for the parents makes sense and probably a separate meeting to talk through with them that, you know, as much as the kids are the active participants on the camps, the parents are coming and representing the club and that you need their help to make this a safe environment. Uh, and, and it's not just, it's not just, you know, woo, skiing's over and the kids are hitting the pool. Uh, but I think it's also, you know, trying to establish some group norms to say you are representing the club. Uh, if this doesn't go well for this group, uh, it might impact our ability in the future. And, and what, do, what do you guys as parents want in this? 
Uh, and I think you're totally on the money. There's going to be totally different levels of uh, probably compliance, but I think the more you can get that group to be involved in, in create their own sort of code, code of conduct, the better instead of you hammering on them. Uh, and then I think the other, the other part of that is, is your staff, uh, although they might not have the evening responsibilities of looking after the teams and da, 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 uh, making sure that you guys are tight and walking the line. Uh, in however you're doing that. If you guys are all staying in one room or one condo, making sure that your crew isn't out at the bar um, or if they are at the bar that they're on the patio and they're sitting at the table. Um, you know, th there's different ways around all of it. Um, I mean, in, in Switzerland, we literally sat at our hotel patio and we had drinks on the couch just about every night and it didn't get wild. Um, but that's that was sort of our place for the, the coaches to blow off some steam and, and relax and chat because you can only sit in a 10 by 10 Swiss hotel room so long. Um, it's kind of normal with everything these days. So. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, you know, I think it's trying to build some consensus um, amongst them, but I would strongly encourage to, to start to, to try to get to the parents to view that they're participants on the camp as well. Uh, and so what are you doing for the parents in their experience? Yeah. And it's not, you know, as much as in the past, the parents have probably looked at it as a bit of a, a vacation. It's changed a little bit. Well, I, I think they all do. It's changed and, a little yeah. bit. It's changed a little every, bit. Now. Every single one where that's coming with us is looking at it from the fact they haven't traveled in a, you know, a year and a half. So it's yeah. a vacation. So that's a risk, right? Like that is a, that is a pitfall. There's no question. Yeah, or or is is the answer organizing some parent activities? Not that they're up running super G with you, but yeah. you know, is there a parent ski day, or you know, can, maybe there's a parent coordinator on the trip to look after that group to take the policing out of that out of you, and see if you can get the parent group to nominate somebody. Yeah, cool. but you know, that's something Kip went through. I know Jen's trying to talk, so I'm gonna let her talk. No, no, no that's okay. I was just. It'll be interesting to hear what Kip says. Yeah. Um, from Hintertux, but last year uh, when they were in Panorama with the U16 HP, we were there as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, I have to say that the parents were were great. Like they really were, um, you know, following the the rules, following the guidelines that um, that Kip and the other coaches had put in place for them. And I and I think that you know, yeah, they're excited to travel, but they're also excited to keep skiing going. So mm -hmm. I think as long as you emphasize to them that it's so important that we all you know, do our part to keep it going. We don't want to get shut down like we did last year. Then yeah. I think that everybody will be pretty keen to, to help out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just, just like you engage the kids and kind of making their own set of norms and rules, like do the same things with the, the same yeah. kind of thing with the parent group. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a huge stakeholder in, in the, the projects for these clubs being successful. So if they're empowered to understand that, that, and I think that, will hopefully go a long way. And, you know, I'm, we're happy to share a lot of the documents that we've had our parents sort of agree to. I think we've had parent code of conducts that we've um, gotten our three U16 camps that we've had during the pandemic. So happy to share those, Jeff. And, and um, you know, Kip's probably not ready to chat as soon as he gets back from Hintertux about it, but I'm sure pretty soon after he'd be willing to share for sure about some of the best practices when the parents are there. But great question. Um, certainly uh, if you guys are doing inter any international travel, I know this uh, Arrive Can app caused some anxiety <laughs> is probably a good word. Um, so if you are crossing borders, you know, make sure athletes have their own phone. It's their email address. Uh, it's not the parents, get them to download it ahead of time, you know, go through it with them and make sure they understand uh, all the implications because it can cause some last minute stress. Yes, Cam, is that correct? Yeah, and, and I think Jen actually, or sorry, uh, Robin hit on, on that quite well. I think the Arrive Can, our, our team's been relatively smooth with it, but if you're moving around borders, I'd say not only Arrive Can, the Swiss had, had different pieces that people had to do, but I think 
empowering older athletes to make sure they've got an operational email on their phone working and that they've got, uh, I, I mean, I think every athlete, you want paper copies or electronic copies of all of what you're your kids, so their vaccination status, all that sort of stuff. I think you want copies as a coach of, of their vaccines. So when they lose it, but encouraging the kids to have copies of, of their vaccine, not only in their computers, but also on their phones. Um, and, and, and I think it back to Jane's question. Um, I don't have a lot of experience below U16 or it's been a long, long time, but I think U16's uh, they go either way. If you treat them like kids, then they will really act the kid part a lot of the time. And if you treat them as adults, they will most often sort of step up to that. And, and I think encouraging kids, I mean, it's a reality. They've got to have vaccines to go to the movies. They've got to have vaccines to do so many things. Um, so they've got to do that. And I'm not a hundred percent sure the arrive can app Jane is that if you're going out of country, you'll need to do it coming back in. If you're traveling as a family group, I believe a parent can do it for a child. Uh, but for our camps, uh, I think all the U16s are doing it for themselves and, and it's probably harder for the parents to do it than it is for the kids. They're pretty savvy at fillable forms on their phones uh, they just need to have the right info with them. So like their flight, their passport, their copies of their vaccine, it's, it's not insurmountable. It's, it's a bit of a, it takes some time the first time, but once you, you, you sort of get it going, it, it's not, it's not the worst product the government could have delivered us. So. Sorry for my voice here. I'm just doubling up with tre treadmill time and uh, <laughs> zoom time. Um, so is that required, is that the one that you use for in-country travel or is there that a different app that's like contact, different. there's a contract tracing app, right? Yeah, the government requires it when you're entering back into the country. Um, it's like what your uh, document would have been before the pandemic. It's now digital um, in this can arrive can app. Yeah, the, the, track, the tracking document. So have you been near somebody with COVID? Uh, is called COVID alert mm -hmm. in Canada. And I think some of the provinces are using it and some of them have developed a, their own. Mm -hmm. um, I know Swiss, Switzerland had their own Swiss one. When I go to Alberta, I flip on the Alberta one because they don't, they're Albertans and don't use it. Um, so things like that. So uh, in your research, you can recommend to people to, you know, to download different bits and pieces in, in different states or different in the US. When we were down there last year, there was a lot of what happens in Colorado is not happening in Montana. So it's really, I, I think that comes back to your research on, on when you're going places just to spend some time checking it out. Yeah, and it, and it will change. So if you know, you're gonna be doing a project in three months time, it's likely to change before then. So make sure it, you know, there's some touch points there and uh, making sure you update your plan as you go, because it's gonna change. And, and I would say the final point uh, is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, plagiarism only exists in academia um, and the rest of us copy and paste with great abandon. Uh, and don't be afraid to talk to your local resorts. Um, I was actually talking with Wade at Sun Peaks today and in, in, in your local resorts, their training centers, they'll be pretty up to speed with what's going on locally. So, you know, I, I, I'd say, you know, if you're, if you're going different locations, don't be afraid to ask them. Um, different resorts sound like they're going to have different policies coming in. Um, so you'll need to know that stuff anyways, but typically your local people have the best connection um, on who to talk with and, and where you can find the info. So you're not out there in the great dub, 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 trying to find answers. And, Perfect, and thanks. I, yeah, we're actually, we're heading to Sun Peaks too. So I've been kind of talking with them, but just, uh, I didn't know if there was one specific one AOA's rolled out or if it, like you said, is kind of selective based on where we're heading. Yeah. Uh, so that's good, okay. But I, I think there can be a lot of group think and, and, and certainly the provincial teams, I know our, our mitigation plan that we're using has done a lap around the different provincial teams and, 
I would encourage people to work together and share documents. And I, I mean, in Switzerland, the test that SOD did to exit was a bit of a, they, we had to do a PCR test to get back to Canada. And the, uh, the SOD test was a bit of a, while we're being recorded, it was a bit of a gaggle. And, um, and through talking with some of the American groups, we're actually able to find a, a different test that was cheaper and far more simple. So sorry about that, Jen. Uh, but you know, I, I think through working not only with your counterparts that you know, but not to be afraid to ask people how they're doing it uh, when you're on the ground in places. Yeah, hundred percent. Thanks for that. And I'll I'll share the documents with you guys um, for sure. I'll send it to this group that's on the line here. Uh, our sort of parent uh, conduct and. Um, and any of the other documents that we shared with our families, I'll send that to you guys, no problem. Which reminds me, before you guys exit, just drop your name in the chat so I can take attendance and get you your credits. Um, but do you guys have uh, any other questions? I know this was a little um, relaxed, but I wanted it to be, to be more of a discussion and to give you guys lots of opportunity to ask questions and if, if you see any needs that would help you guys in being able to plan your projects, like sharing documents, um, happy to do that. So we've got some resources to share, just uh, ask away, but I'll, I'll share those pieces with you we just talked about. Jen's got her hand up. If anybody's going to Sunshine, um, they were a little bit specific about what they wanted in the mitigation plan mm -hmm. so i can help if anybody happens to be going there there's lots of back and forth with their their lawyers to make sure it was worded properly so yeah and and i think that's a good point is ask you know mm -hmm. if you're going somewhere ask them what they need yeah. to see as well <laughs> yeah not sure. that you're tailoring but you need to tailor anyways so you write this beautiful big document and then they've got a bunch of bullets that they need to see anyways um, and not to be afraid to ask them if they if they have mitigation reports from other teams um, that have been successful or on the ground. They might not give you the report, but ask if you can get the coach's email and talk to them. For sure. And then just pray you're not the first coach to go there and be successful so you can <laughs> copy and paste. Jane, did you have a question? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we're I've been kind of slowly building that COVID medication plan as we kind of get back into office finally and we talk with the board and all those different things like the board's been pretty tied up with just basic covid rules i think for the clubs right now mm -hmm. now that those are out um i'm hoping that they'll give us a little a little bit more time um but uh you said it was kind of like a living document so we sub i'm close to submitting it do we submit it and then if we do update it as we go do we keep sending that back to you or is that more just for our own copy purposes yeah definitely keep updating it for yourself you don't need to send it to us every time you update it you know if we if we review it and see that there's some big hole missing we'll address it with you before we send it to ACA for sanctioning but it's it's just something you need to keep coming back to um, based on the research you're doing uh, and making sure everyone understands those changes but no it doesn't need to keep coming back to us Jane okay and is there like I know that obviously it's the hope that was September, obviously, to get those in. Is there kind of a hard deadline with things changing, or should I just send as soon as we have something pretty concrete? And then if there's a major change, we send it back? Or Yeah, I mean, 14 days is typically their turnaround uh, to sanction something. So we haven't ever not been sanctioned uh, during COVID. Um, so it's not like we're waiting to get a no, you can't go answer. It's more is the is the plan thorough and thought through um before we send it and then it's just a for the most part um just bureaucratic kind of hoops at that point so there's no need to to send it back to uh, to aca once if uh, you know unless obviously you're changing venues or you know something major has changed okay perfect thank you thanks Jane. mb you're on mute, MB. It's all right. Um, just to recap that process, like, can you walk through like 
or as I understand, there's like CSA sanctioning and ACA sanctioning. Can you yeah. walk through the process of having the plan and then where it needs to go? So all projects outside of your division need to have a mitigation plan submitted to Alpine Ontario. If it's out of country, there's an additional document that needs to be completed. And it's all on the insurance page, which I'll link here in the chat in a minute on our website. Um, and those uh, documents for out of country go to ACA. ACA doesn't need to see it if it's in country. We just need to see it if it's in country. If you need a certificate of insurance, a physical certificate of insurance, which right now I think is a really good idea, you need to complete that certificate of insurance document as well. So if you're leaving the country, there's the mitigation plan, the sanctioning request and the certificate of insurance. So that those are you know three documents. If you're just staying within country, uh, it's the mitigation document and the certificate of insurance request. And I'll, I'll drop the link here on, uh, on our website but that's that the only thing that's changed over the past years is just the COVID mitigation plan that's always been the requirement uh when sanctioning projects in the past brian you had a question yeah and i think uh mb uh passed it too awesome I'll, uh... Yeah, I'm just so we're we're going to Tromblant, so I'm I'd be uh, interested to have to have whatever documents to put um, to put the mitigation plan together. So I just dropped in the chat. That's the insurance page on our website. If you scroll down to number seven, it has you know how do I sanction a camp project? Uh, all the information's there all the links to all the relevant documents. And then uh, off of our home page, the COVID page is on that rolling um, screen, but I will, I will drop this in the chat. For all the COVID documents, it's a weird URL. We're, you know, AOA office working remotely, but anyway, that's our COVID page. <laughs> and that's where all of the, uh, the these are all PDFs. Um, most of them. So if you want uh, in Word, I can send it to you in Word or you can just convert it to Word to fill it in. But again, as Cam said, we've got a, a boatload of these for past projects, um, most of them international, but there are some, I think, you know, Cam did an Akiska plan. There's definitely a Panorama plan, um, probably got a Trombola plan. Um, so we can recycle those to you guys. Uh, to just ask if we've got a mountain and plan or do we have a sunfeet plan? I'll share it with you if we do. Tomas. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, even though I've submitted an out of, con uh, out of country sanction uh, for certificate of insurance, so I still have to, like, when I sent that out, I submitted one to Alpine Ontario as well. Mm -hmm. You don't need anything other than what I've already sent, right? No. Okay, because... Um, Sun Peaks is not requiring a certificate of insurance. You don't uh, have to have it unless yeah. the venue asks for it. But I think right now, based on a lot of our coaches experience traveling, it's a really good idea to have it. Um, okay. I, I, I talked to Alpine Canada last week and they're saying they don't, that Sun Peaks is not like Trombla is asking for it. St. Anne's asking for it, but not Sun Peaks. So anyways, I'll, I'll uh, try to push them again and see what they say. Yeah, that's weird. And, and I think I think you, you see most resorts, if, if you're going anywhere in the US, they'll be asking for COI. And, and I think more so in Quebec that I've seen than out West. The West doesn't typically ask for them. So yeah. they, yeah. OK, perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thomas. Robin, is the certificate of insurance something we have to separately apply for, or yes. do we have it because we've, yeah? yeah. And that goes to get, okay. So that's that's part of the, the forms that we have to fill out and submit, right? Yeah, that, that link I sent you has okay. got the link to the document um, on there. Some venues in the past, like in the past, yeah. uh, if it's a FIS homologated venue, they typically don't 
don't ask for it. Um, but there are some that always do. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's not something that's quick and dirty to get turned around. So you need a little bit of time. And some venues are very specific with the names of the corporation they want on the certificate of insurance. So we have a certificate of insurance that's applicable to all of our clubs um, that I can share with you right now, but it doesn't have the specific venues of all the uh, resorts that clubs go to. So yeah, yeah. legally, Fun legally. Ones, so many... One of the ones that are particular. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah, just for uh, Brian's uh, FYI, Trombaugh does ask for a certificate, even for our little U U12 camps we do there. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, last question. If if you have a already completed Trump block camp, can you share that? So sure. I can uh, read it and come up with uh, a version. I know. I don't know if we've got one yet, to be honest, but I'll, I'll take a look through my file just because I know there wasn't any clubs traveling to Trump last year. Um, Camp Fortune might have had one, so I'll check. I'll check. I'll check Brian and I'll flip it to you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Anyone got anything else? All right. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you Feel free if you guys have any other questions to, to reach out, um, but appreciate your time. And I'll follow up regardless tomorrow with those documents, sort of parent conduct pieces of the puzzle. Cause I think that from what I'm sensing, that's gonna be the biggest piece of the puzzle for you guys and getting everyone on, on side with what you're trying to execute on your projects. So. I forgot one thing. Um, I wrote some notes before it. Um, the other thing we've had a bit of success with this year uh, is uh, it's, it, it's becoming quite easy um, or certainly easier to access antigen tests. Uh, you can you can get a hold of them from a bunch of different organizations. Uh, I think locally here, I know you can buy them from Shoppers Drug Mart. I think it's 25 bucks or 15 bucks for 25. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend a, a huge strict um, daily testing uh, type uh, program, but certainly we had them and so did SOD with Jen over in Europe. And what it did do is provide a little bit of comfort around when kids get the sniffles. Uh, and I know Whistler Mountain and Sun Peaks and Banff Alpine that were also in Switzerland had all got them. And what it, you'll need to check with your clubs and your directors to see if they're comfortable with a coach getting trained up or how to use them. They're pretty simple to do, but it can be a layer of defense when, if you've got a flu bug going around a team um, to understand whether, you know, how high stress levels need to raise in the coaching staff. Um, it, it is one tool at your disposable or at your disposal that you can access. Uh, and local health uh, units, I think, can also provide access. So it's it's not uh, it's not a, a a broad sweeping solution, but I think it can be another tool in your toolbox to um, you know provide some defense or some understanding on your team situation. Uh, and I think certainly anybody that's around school age kids is seeing that flu bugs and runny noses are back in action after 18 months of not being there. So that's all I would add. Sorry, they, that was late. They, they were still there. They were just all COVID. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but, um, and, and again, they're, they're not, hundred percent, but neither is a PCR test, but if uh, it can be a, a tool to help you. No, you know, it's a great point, Cam, because I actually tested probably three kids when we were in Sauce Bay, just they all just, you know, they've been at home and not interacting so much in masks on. And there's definitely, there was a cold going around for sure. It just, yeah, it, it alleviates some of the stress of that. So just to be able to test them 
you know, you get the negative and then you're like, okay, you're okay to, you know, carry on. Yeah. So it, would you write like thinking about like a bigger group setting, like perhaps you, your team, the SOD team as an example, like, is it something you did on the regular and then did more if, you suspected something or just as like a peace of mind tool if it, someone had sniffles? Yeah, in Switzerland, it was just uh, if they had any kind of symptom, then they we tested it as just an emergency. Um, and I, I think going forward, that would that would just be the way we would use them. Sure. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Uh, and the one thing I would say that if you're going to travel with the antigen tests, is it it's not a substitute. Uh, you know, vaccination is not a substitute for uh, doing the basics well, and neither is having antigen tests with you. Um, so if a kid's sick, it's not, oh, you've got the flu, but you can still come up and train. Um, I, I think it's more of a case of it gives you a little bit of understanding what's going on with your group. Uh, I, the, there was a bug going around the hotel um, that we were all in with SOD, and I know a couple of teams they didn't, they kept their guys away from meals and stuff like that. They knew it wasn't COVID, but you don't want the rest of your group sort of coming down with the plague, whatever new plague it is that doesn't register on the COVID test chart. So it's more I, just, you know, that you don't have to take for a COVID test. It doesn't mean that they can, you know, spread it around to everybody for sure. Yeah. So just when I say have antigen tests, it's a tool, it's not a solution. Yeah, Absolutely. and it doesn't, like you say, it doesn't replace just the the basics, right? Or, you know, replace anything for that matter. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks to the experts for all your uh, intel. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks to Cam, because uh, he was the originator of all things COVID mitigation, and without him, we wouldn't have known where to go with it. So thank Fair. you, Cam. You broke the mold, Cam. <laughs> Thanks for that. Not sure whether it's a good way or not, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody for your time. Appreciate it. We're always here. I'll post this recording on that website, uh, our webpage tomorrow. So feel free to share it. And um, every other questions, you know where I am. Thanks, Robin. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Robin.